Uh, why acupuncture? So it's been used in China for many, 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 many years. Many, many, many years. And we know that because the first sort of uh, uh, cons uh, the, the sort of script that we saw is from the Yellow Emperor, and they had pictures of um, men jabbing sharp rocks on, into other men for medical purposes, and that's how it all started. I say it's like if somebody probably jab it sort of um, accidentally or playfully or even maliciously, and the victim or the patient would go, "Ooh, that's good." <laughs> So there's, a, there's something over there. So that's how it slowly, slowly, slowly got refined. Um, it's gained popularity in the Western medicine in the last sort of 50 years. And in NHS, there's actually an <coughs> acupuncture protocol for knee injuries. So for NHS to actually adopt that, to say that that is a protocol and we know what is NHS, everything is just constant, it's, it's scripted. You know, you go through all those four channels to get the sort of treatment. And so, you know, they are certainly doing that. And the BMAS, the British Medical uh, Acupuncture Society, it's a very large or thriving society. Demand <coughs> of clients may increase in the future. Well, I wrote this lecture about 15 years ago. So right now we certainly know that you know it is there. People are asking for it. People are wanting it. Um, and certainly in the future, there may be even more scope for it as well. Relatively non-invasive. When we're using drugs, we're sticking needles into a patient and moving them again, not leaving anything inside there. So the side effects are much less profound. Nothing is going into the system, so to speak, not putting a chemical in there. Um, it may be useful in many conditions, and we go through some conditions in a bit. And a, we use it also to reduce medication. So it may not do the entire job, but certainly we may be able to use in conjunction with um, drugs to reduce those drugs as well. So, this is where I'm going to dive a little bit to the conceptual difference between the Western medicine and TCM. This is interesting. The reason why I say that is because we have to understand what the main differences are, in a way, to see how it goes. Okay, so let's talk about Chinese medicine, biological. So we view the body as a whole and how one organ will affect the other and how. It is, um, it, 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 it is not just organ by organ by organ, okay? Um, spiritual, acupuncture used to be done by monks. And certainly in the Western medicine, there isn't anything sort of spiritual about medicine. So there's one big difference, so to speak. Uh, philosophy, so there's a lot of philosophy behind the whole idea of acupuncture. Whereas, I say in um, Western medicine, is show me the evidence, let's test this drug, let's test this method, let's collate the results and see whether it works or not. These are the concepts of traditional Chinese medicine or TCM, which I find it very fascinating. So in Western medicine, we are quite familiar with the term of we get history, we check the heart rate, we check the breathing, we check the gums, uh, we get the blood pressure, measure the blood pressure, measure the temperature, and we look more patient. And that is how we uh, sort of uh, go on to the next step of what potentially may be wrong with this dog, let's do further testing, let's do some blood tests and things like that. In Chinese medicine, it is a challenge because in tradition, uh, especially women, they cannot reveal their skin because it is not, it's not the right thing for women to do. And so all the doctor has is their wrist, that little space in between. And that is where they have to take a pulse and from that pulse, they diagnose everything. Two more things that they do, they look at the fingernails and they look at the tongue. So when I go to a Chinese doctor in Singapore, they would take my pulse and they would look at my fingernails and they look at my tongue because that's all the body parts that they have or all the tools that they have to be able to go on to the next step. And that is quite fascinating because I've seen those Chinese doctors, they go, oh yeah, not for me, but uh, for a lady, you're pregnant. <laughs> I can feel the other pulse. It's probably how many months down. And I'll look at fingernails and say, oh, you've got a liver problem. I'll look at the tongue and say that mm, your kidney isn't functioning very, very well. Can you imagine if I don't know how to do that? <laughs> a dog comes in, hey, hey, if I'm this or not, like, that's a problem. But um, yeah, so that is Chinese medicine. So 
they use very, very different concepts on how to find the what the next step. And just remember, we use physical concepts like heart rate, breathing rate, thermometer, temperature, and things like that. Whereas they have the five phases, elements theory, uh, the yin yang theory, the balance, you know what I mean? Um, and just to point a little bit about that, yin yang theory, they call it yin yang, it's a black and white little spinny globe that you can see over there. Um, in, we have a similar thing in Western medicine, homeostasis, balance. You cannot be too hot, you cannot be too cold. The sugar level cannot go too high, you cannot go too low. So there's always a balance. So it is very, very similar concepts but explained in a totally different way. We use a meridian system, the eight principles, the five emotions and the five psychic aspects. The interesting thing is all these concepts, they are the basis for diagnosis and treatment. Whereas in Western medicine, if I would start to reel this off to any of you, in the consult you'll be like, it's mad. It's <laughs> not a rocker. How is a dog sleeping? <laughs> the liver must be having a problem. So yeah, it is very, very different. So, in the middle stands uh, you know, the, the sort of Vitruvian man by Leonardo da, uh, da Vinci. And if we take a look at this two little aspects, surgery and pharmaceutical drugs, that's pretty much Western medicine. Whereas in Chinese medicine, they believe in holistic, where it includes herbal medicine, nutritional medicine, lifestyle and behavior, very important, mind-body medicine, energy medicine, and manipulative therapies, like I said, how the Chinese doctor would push my shoulder back in place, rather than just say, don't move and put some drugs. So it is a much more holistic approach. And um, yeah, so we talk about the balance of yin and yang. So um, the reason why I brought this up is because just to remind us that there is actually an equivalent in Western medicine, so to speak, so to speak just call it differently, homeostasis.